Greenwich Village. Once the in spot for beatnik jazz and bebop is today home to the popular folk music fan, a do-it-yourself musical expression that's attracted youngsters from all across the nation. For them, these homespun songs of the working man express a truth and candor sorely lacking in today's growing consumer society. Why do you prefer folk music to other types of music? Because it's honest. Commercial songs, pop music, can't be honest. It's controlled and censored by the people who run society and make the rules. Yet among the many new and talented artists to emerge, one name stands alone as the heart and soul of this growing musical trend, a young individual who both writes and performs some of his era's finest tunes, and hailed by the New York Times as folk music's troubadour of conscience. His name is Jack Rollins. Jack Rollins, folk sensation of the early 60s, was the promise of a new generation. So what was it that made him run at the height of his career and throw it all away, trading in the limelight for a different kind of light altogether? He saw what was going on in the world, and he had the ability to distill it into a song. He could do a funny thing. He could do a pathos thing or sensation. For the times, they are changing. This young man has taken to the hearts of young people who seem to somehow identify with uh, Jack. Why do you think that is? Well, I don't know. I, I guess you know, I, got, I got a lot of thoughts inside of me. And uh, most people, they, uh, they, they, they keep them all inside. You know? I guess it's for them that I do what I do. Today, the name Jack Rollins might best be remembered as the tortured singer battling his conscience in the 1965 drama, Grain of Sand. The role, of course, that launched the career of Hollywood rebel, Robbie Clark. Hell, I don't pick what I sing, it picks me. Some of it ain't pretty. I mean, how are you ever gonna change anything if you only wanna show what's pretty? In his first exclusive interview in 20 years, tonight, we bring you face to face with the real Jack Rollins. William Zanzinger killed poor Hattie Carroll With the cane that he twirled around his diamond ring finger He saw what was going on in the world and he had the ability to distill it into a song. This elevated the discussion, I mean, certainly within the folk world, but all through popular music that the bar had risen. Alice Fabian was herself a leading figure in the folk revival achieving international success a few years before their first meeting in 1962. Hey, you're in my chair. I was at a party in the village and this torpy little kid who'd been hanging around kind of flirting with my baby sister and kissing up to me starts playing these songs that he'd written on guitar. Now, this was 61, 62 when all anybody sang or traditionals, and here's this kid applying traditional form to contemporary concerns, but with such insight, you know, it was devastating. You couldn't believe this was coming out of this little toad, and, and nobody was writing songs like that. It was as if he was giving voice to ideas that I wanted to express, but didn't know how. Um, his finger pointing songs, he called them, and he was turning them out like ticker tape. Well, folk music has always been a political music, but he was really expressing it as an art form in a way that was multi-leveled and very deep. Hattie Carroll was a maid of the kitchen. She was 51 years old and gave birth to 10 children who carried the dishes and took out the garbage and never sat once at the head of the table and didn't even talk to the people at the table who just cleaned up all the food from the table and emptied the ashtrays on a whole other level got killed by a blow lay slain by a cane that's every night i would call this this ragamuffin on stage and introduce america to jack rollins i'd say you know that he has something to say you know and that he is he is speaking for me and everybody who wants a better world. Ah, oh, but you who philosophize disgrace and criticize our fears. Bury the rag deep in your face. 
face Now's the time for your tears He knows how to peel the surface from what he sees His songs are like a true vision of how things really are Well, I just find he's the most piercing and aware inside working today You'd have thought we'd invented it, but we were so pleased and proud <laughs> Sure, there was a certain uh, tendency in the folk movement for nostalgia about the depression and uh, the radicalism that came out of it. They were coming out of a shitty time, the McCarthy era, Eisenhower era. So as long as folk remained strictly a minority taste, it would always be us against the big bad commercial tastelessness. But when the big bad commercial tastelessness finally caught on to Jack, then, well, all of a sudden uh, the race was on. And this time somebody was gonna win. He was a rebel. I wanted to record protest. Of course, that's right when we were getting into the, uh, that whole Nam business. Jack really stopped protesting after 1963. He said that you couldn't affect change with a song. Um, he could only write about what was inside you. And folk music, he said, was, um, was bat people. Said made him feel like the establishment, you know, he, and he always fought the establishment. You will search, babe, 